Hey, welcome to this class today. We will require a fair bit of props, but there's alternatives to that. If you have around the usual blanket, a bolster, and maybe also two blocks. Now, I'm aware this is a lot of yoga props. You might not have them all. If you don't have two blocks or a bolster at all, you can choose something like the couch here or pull in a chair. We can create a very similar setting with other items of furniture. So if you're lacking a bolster and or your blocks, maybe you have a couch nearby which you can rest your legs on or bring a chair into your space um, that has a good height as well. So now that you are more prepared, let's start lying down on the backs. Um, maybe before you completely uh, relax and close your eyes, I noticed it might be uh, necessary to show you the color that um, was drawn today for the practice. It's cyan, if I pronounce it correctly, and I wouldn't know what color that is if I hadn't seen it. So I thought you might like to see it's just the color, nothing in the image itself. So simply memorizing the color, what cyan looks like. And then coming to your mat and lying down onto your backs. You can use the bolster already if you want to be really comfortable here. You can use your blanket as a cushion or even to keep you warm, depending on where you are practicing. And as you find a resting place for yourself, you can choose to close your eyes. Or you might steady your gaze against the spot on the ceiling. We begin with a simple practice of sighing. While you might choose to breathe in through the nose, let the breath come out of the mouth. <sighs> Do that a few times, breathing in through the nose. Oh. You can choose your size to be really soft and almost quiet. And you can choose them to be really, really loud as well. So choosing the way you sigh. Loud, strong, soft, quiet. Maybe you vary the quality of your sighs for a little bit, still breathing in and sighing out. And exploring where's the difference for yourself to sigh gently or loudly. <sighs> and then after you've had your next sigh, just pause, let go of the idea of sighing, the sound that might accompany it, and just feel, have you been able to let go, to let your body rest? I will ask you to deepen your breathing again. This time you can choose your normal breath, only deeper, or full yogi breath, which flows from belly to ribs to collarbones, in and out of the nose in the same pattern. Belly, ribs to collarbones. And you might begin in your mind while breathing in to think the word lightness and when you breathe out let go breathing in lightness and out let go 
lightness, let go. Keeping your breath flowing more deeply, leave these words with you as you inhale for lightness, out breath, let go. You might ask yourself, what should I let go of? This might reveal itself throughout the practice. We sometimes hold on so very tightly to things that we really don't need anymore ideas we don't require anymore and sometimes we're just holding on so very tightly as we're afraid of change how about we created some space some lightness and let go of that that is rather burdening us you might explore this concept of grasping of holding on to tightly throughout the practice today. You might enjoy changing your breathing ever so slightly. Keeping it full, but more relaxed. If you have a bolster underneath your knees, please remove that, push it out and off the mat. Step your feet down and let your arms just simply relax onto the ground. Palms of your hands might be open here. And you could choose as you breathe in to just roll your head over to one side. Breathe out to center the head, inhaling to roll the head to the other side and exhaling to center it again. Let that continue. If possible, leave the head lying on the floor or cushion and just rolling it lazily from side to side each time you breathe in and with the out by centering the head. You might not even really pause and just let that flow in the length of your slightly deeper breath. So you're developing a movement pattern in combination with your breathing. And your next even left and right, centering your head. Bringing your feet to a comfortable distance, maybe hip distance, maybe wider. Leaving your arms out here. Let your knees now, as you breathe in, slightly roll to one side. Then exhale to center them. Inhale, let them roll slightly to the other. And exhale to center them. You could, as you continue the movement, the knees rolling side to side, increase the range of movement. But do so gradually, rather than leaning your knees towards the ground, exploring more the movement itself. It's not about the outcome in yoga really at all. Yes, we are aiming for union and combining um, our breath, our mind, our body. But in the end, it is just an exercise of awareness that teaches us all of this. When you feel even this time, a left and right side, come to pause back in the center. As you bring your elbows into a bend, make light fists with your hand. Breathing in. On the out, must touch the hands in front of the chest and lift your head a little, looking down towards the knees. Lying back on the inhale, gentle fists and open your arms out. 
with the hour by lifting your upper body, your hands might touch at the heart. Now feel free to continue just as the movement is right now. If it feels right for you, you might instead of just the hands touch the whole forearms together while you lift your upper body. In breath here is the same as you open and out breath to lift. So your variation, only hands touching or forearms touching. And as usual, just moving with your breath. With your next one, lifting up. Lie back down as you breathe in. Take your knees loosely over your chest and give them a hug when you breathe out. You might enjoy just squeezing the knees in towards the chest. But might also enjoy just a little rocking there from side to side across your back. We've already worked with the majority of our bodies. And you can now choose to roll over onto your side or rocking a few times along the length of the spine, coming into a seated position. Now, I will for now remove the blanket, although you can still use it as your cushion to sit on. I will choose now to sit on my heels, but again, this is only a choice. If your knees aren't that grateful for this position, you might have your legs out in front. I have chosen a block just to place it between my feet, so I'm actually not sitting on the heels, but on the block. You might find that useful as well. As we come to sit upright, there is a one hand position that I draw throughout the week, and this is also about grasping. You will turn your left palm to face forward in front of you. Hook the right hand fingers together with your left. Lower the arms comfortably in front of you and let your shoulders be easy. Then start to pull on your fingers. So you're feeling a tension coming up into the upper back. You might even feel a little expansion into the ribcage. While you're practicing not to grasp, we do need to know what it is to grasp. So while you breathe out, pull with your left hand into a twist. Then inhale to center and pull with your right hand into a twist, breathing out, inhaling to center. Now repeat that twice more to each side, always pulling more on one side, softening into the center, and then on the other. So here we're using the out breath to twist, unlike in our lying position, because we want the strength of the arms to be supported. When you come into the center, once completed, change the mutra to Anjali and stretch the arms up, breathing in. On the out by circle your arms behind your back. Find an interlace of the fingers behind the back. Then lengthen the arms down or away from your back. Deliberately squeeze the shoulder blades. Lift your heart. Maybe your chin comes up, taking a back bend here in a seated form, breathing in. As you breathe out, relax your arms, leaning the body forward. If you're comfortable with inversions, I suggest to tuck the chin in. If you're not, keep the head at heart level. If you have tucked the chin in, you may place the head down, lift away from your heels. Roll to the crown and even raise the arms away from your back. Rabbit pose. Let your arms release again and drop into a full child's pose, but only to uncurl the spine and rise again into a seated position. We will turn the right palm forward now 
and hook the left hand fingertips in, lowering the arms to soften the shoulders, and then starting that pull on the hands, feeling back into the strength we create between our hands. And on the out breath, now pulling more on the right side to twist, the in breath to center, and then on the left, breathing out. And the same here, we'll repeat twice more to each side. Each movement comes along with your breath. Maybe there's already patterns emerging of you holding on somewhere. Bring that to your mind. As you come back into center after your repetition, join the palms off the hands. Breathe in to extend your arms up. With your out breath, release the hands back into the interlace. Maybe it's the other fingers on top. Lengthening the arms down the back or away from it. Shoulder blades are squeezing. Heart might lift. And for those with a happy neck, you might lift your chin up too. Taking a deep full breath. Your choices are the same here as you might lean forward, gently leaving the head at level of heart. Or you might tuck the chin in and place the head down in front of your knees, rolling to the top of the head, arms optionally lifting away from the back. Releasing into child's pose as your arms might drop by the sides, relaxing the upper body. And then uncurling your spine again as you're breathing out, rising once more into a seated position. I will get ready now to change position onto all fours. You might choose to do the same. So I will remove the block for now, taking socks off. And finding uh, myself with the knees underneath the hips, the hands at shoulder distance apart. As usual, if your hands or wrists feel sore, you can step up onto fists instead. Finding some strength here in this position. Closing the eyes. And start to notice where you require some movement and start to act upon it. This could be a sway in your hips. It could be a circular movement. It could come from a cat and cow. Just moving in a way that feels good for you. We will now, at least as a choice, and I might turn myself the other way so you can see better. If it's available to you, if not, stay on all fours, extending the right leg out towards the side. You might sway and move a little bit forward and backwards, creating some space in that extended leg so you're more comfortable here. Then center yourself on all fours. As you breathe in, reach your left arm out to the side and look at your fingers. With the out breath, thread the needle as a movement and look underneath. With the in breath, reach out to the side, looking at your fingers. The exhale to thread the needle. We'll do that one more time, breathing in, reaching out. Exhaling to thread through. This time you may rest to your ear, to your shoulder. If this is too low, you may rest on your blanket or you could rest your head onto a block. This also helps with sore shoulders as there's not so much pressure into the floor. As you look over to your hand and to your foot. Pushing the hand back down into the ground, sliding your right arm across to your extended leg, 
and take your breath in to lift your left arm over the head as you rise out by leaning into a gate pose so just for a few breaths might you slightly bounce in and out of your gate pose i'm also choosing to turn my hand move through the fingers sometimes press out through the wrist of the hand just to encourage our arm lines to stay mobile from your gate pose swing the hand down release right hand to mat inhale arm reaches out exhale thread the needle swing your arms around breathe in for your gate pose out to release reach your arm out inhale thread exhale swirl around gate pose breath in exhale release arm goes out inhale exhale thread and one last gate as you breathe in to open it and your out breath release your hands back down lower your right knee down towards the mat a strong out breath around your spine Inhale, soften, tail gaze lifting. Out breath, strong arms rounding the spine. Keep that going, breath in, tail gaze lifting. Out breath to round. Neutralizing your spine again. So the same here, if available, please extend your left leg out to the side, landing the foot. Toes might even be turned forward. We'll start with the moving thread the needle. Here's the right arm reaching out. You look at your fingertips on the in breath and then thread it through on your out breath. Inhaling, reaching to the side. Exhaling, threading through. One more round, breathing in. On the exhale, as you might thread through, again, you could use a block, a blanket for the head. Less pressure on the shoulder, the head a little bit higher as you look along the floor. Or you lie right down on the floor in front of you. Pushing down into the mat, swirl it around, reaching your right arm up over the head for a gate pose. Of a rest mind, yours can stay over the head and starting to bend into the side. So if your um, right shoulder is happy, your arm is extended over the head. And if yours isn't, you can rest it into the side. A little bounce here. If your arm is extended, you might move into the wrists, the fingers, add that to your bounce of the side bend. And pause. We'll create the same flow here again. Arm reaches down, a breath in to reach out, and exhale to thread, and inhale to swing into gait, and exhale to release, the breath in to reach out, and exhale to thread. And inhale for a gate. And one last round as you reach down, out to the side. Exhale to thread. Inhale to open into the gate. And out breath to release. Bending the other knee, landing again on the hands and the knees. And you might create a few cat and cow movements again. If that's not quite right, maybe moving a little bit from side to side there. It might be a good idea to extend the leg. So you might extend your right leg out, encourage a little push back to the heel and rocking forward again. So maybe you're rocking a few times forward and backward, aiming to lengthen into the calf muscle, maybe the back of the thigh. 
You could then pause here, keeping hands spread out and arms strong, half a plank position. Your choice to keep it like this or lift the second knee, finding a plank. We will change sides. So it's now the right knee coming down, the left leg uh, extends. And we're pushing back into the heel of the foot, just a rocking movement coming in and out. You can then choose to hold here again. One knee off the ground, half plank, strong upper body. Or you might tuck the other toes under, hold a full plank position. Let's all lend both knees down to the mat, untuck the toes and keep the elbows close while lowering down onto the front of the body. You might rest your forehead down. Hands underneath the shoulders, elbows are nice and snug. Just a little lift here to a baby cobra as you lift your head and chest, your gaze just lightly down in front. Option, bending right knee and looking down the right side. Inhaling to straighten and lift to baby cobra. Left knee might bend as you look down the side, out breath. Inhale, baby cobra. Exhale, twist. Inhale, cobra. Exhale, twist. Maybe repeating once more to each side, resting earlier if that feels better. When you do come to the center, inhale. On the exhale, resting your forehead down. With the inhale, push into the mat, tucking the toes under as you reach towards the heels, walking the hands up towards your knees, lifting knees off the ground, releasing heels to the mat, aligning the outer edges of the feet as you come to stand on them in a standing forward bend, backside of the mat. Let your hands support you against chins or thighs as you straighten your spine forward, half lift. Exhaling, folding forward. Inhaling, half lift. Exhaling, folding forward. One more time, breathing into a half lift. Exhaling into a forward fold. Leaving your knees soft, upper body hanging. Your out bus to guide you all the way up, rolling up into standing, giving the shoulders a little lift and a shrug back as you're breathing out. We will find our feet together this time. So if possible, if this is too challenging for your balance, um, hip distance stands is fine, but legs and knees might uh, be good to support each other and be close. Raising your arms out in front or around your ears. On the exhale, bending knees and hips, squeezing your knees lightly, chair pose. So establish what it feels right in your shoulders. Arms a little bit lower, palms up, arms around the ears and palms facing or somewhere in between. Your knees are lightly squeezing, but your sitting bones are open. You're engaging more through the lower abdominal muscles. And we will create a twist here. As you turn your left palm forward, the right hand hooks in. Shoulders become easy and there's a pull between your hands. Now we're pulling upwards. As you brace out, pull on your left hand, upwards into a twist. Inhale, come to center. Keep squeezing your knees. Pull up with the right hand. Inhale, come to center. We'll go once more to each side. Squeeze your knees and pull up with the hand. Inhaling, center. One more on the other side, breathing out. 
Let's center again and release the arms back into the chair pose. Push down into the feet, extending maybe into standing back bend. And on the exhale, releasing your arms down. Give the shoulders a little shrug. And step your feet out wide. Maybe facing the long side of the mat. We will turn the right toes towards the short side. The left heel towards the other short side of the mat. We'll take a breath in to extend both arms out. On the breath out, push them out to shoulder height and bend into your right knee, looking traditionally over the front hand fingertips. Now feeling into your stance, both of your arms could be extended, but the front knee here is aligned over the ankle and the toes. And you could start to pull your feet inwards a little, lifting a bit more through the spine. Now, what happens if you were to turn the palms up here? How does that feel in your shoulders? Can you feel a strong foundation without gripping your toes into the ground? How is it best for your shoulders to be? Maybe it's soft elbows that release you from the tension there. With your next in-breath, straighten your leg again. Lift your arms up once more. With the exhale, interlace the hands and bring the bend back into the front knee. Arms behind the back as you draw the arms down all the way from the back. Lifting your heart space. Coming back to a back bend we've practiced seated. On your out breath now, lean towards the inside of your right front leg. Arms can be restful. You might even lower the head all the way down and you could raise your arms away from the back. It's okay not to, you could rest the arms down or you could bend both elbows and slide your interlaced hands like a gentle massage across your lower back. Releasing your hands down. Walk them into the center of your feet. Turn your feet in the same direction and start to sway just a little bit from side to side. Maybe we can create a little bit more space in the legs, in our thighs and hips. Then center yourself. The knees are soft and start to uncurl when breathing out. Lift your arms when you come to stand, inhaling and releasing the arms down, breathing out. We'll turn the left toes to the short side of the mat and the right heel a little bit to the other short side. The stance is quite wide and a breath in to reach your arms up. And out by pushing arms out, bending left knee, warrior two. So taking that note about the front knee, when the foot there is very active, the knee aligns over ankle and points in the direction of the toes. Those two feet can pull inwards a little. And you might again play with your arms. See what works for your shoulders. You often hold tension in this shape, and yet we think it's necessary, but is it? Are you gripping there with the shoulders, or can you find a position where the arms are easy and you're still quite strong in your stand. With your next in-breath, straighten the front leg, reach your arms up. The odd interlace as you bend the front knee again, releasing the hands into the grip. As you lengthen the arms down away from your back, start to lift your heart and maybe your chin. Take a couple of breaths here. Standing warrior back bend. With the next out breath, then start leaning forward towards the inside of the leg. You might even release the head fully if your clock pressure and pressure in the eyes allow you to. Arms can rest, be lifted, or you could again bend your elbows and slide your interlaced hands just across your lower back 
as a light massage. Releasing your hands back down to the ground. Walking hands in between the feet, turning your toes forward. Out edges of the feet are parallel as you reach your spine, long like a half lift, breathing in. And then slowly folding forward, breathing out. And your hands can slide behind and reach through between the legs or be placed underneath the shoulders as more common. Shoulders then lightly lifted. Let your weight lean forward towards the toes, but keep the whole foot on the mat. Knees are soft. Taking two long out breaths. Really squeezing the air out until the last bit is gone. Then begin to bend both of your knees. You might heel and toe your feet a little bit closer together and then beginning to uncurl the spine again as you're raising out, rising to stand, giving the shoulders a little shrug back as you come to a tall mountain pose. Noticing that potentially there's not that much contact to the ground, just feeling into the feet, letting your knees soften a little bit. Maybe there's a jiggle in the body to release the energy towards the ground. When you feel more grounded, steady your gaze and you can face in any direction you like for the balance. You might shift your weight towards the left foot, feel the right heel off the floor or lift the right knee. You might place your ankle to the opposite thigh and bend your knee. You might even lean your hands down and place the hands to the ankle and the shin. This is all. This is the balance today. Aim for a long spine. And if you like a deeper stretch, bending your standing leg more, keeping the ankle joint actively flexed. Pushing yourself back to stand. If you've got the control, lift the knee and the arms. If not, just step to the ground, releasing the foot, releasing the arms, maybe closing the eyes as you come back to pause in your mountain pose. Likely to notice more weight in one side, imbalances. And our natural response is a holding on to balance, which isn't a state, but a constant work in progress. So let's do the progression as we lean towards the right foot. Maybe peeling the left heel off the mat. Maybe it's the whole knee lifting, the foot is flexing. Ankle might come to the thigh, standing leg might bend. And hands could start to reach for ankle and shin. These are just options. Please keep the flexion in your ankle, maybe bending your standing leg more if you're after a deeper stretch. Balance is unchanged. We stand on one leg. Keeping your spine long, gaze steady. And very slowly. Lifting up again. If you've got the balance, lift your knee and your arms, land the foot and release again into mountain pose, turning the hands forward as you lengthen through your spine. Before we come into a seated or squatting position, bring your feet and knees to touch again. Choosing once more your arm position for a chair pose, all the way up, in front of you or in between. Squeeze your knees a little together, bending your knees and hips, sitting bones open, lower tummy muscles on. Right hand in front, but facing the palm away. Left hand hooks in as we start to pull, the shoulders are easy. Same here. 
as you brace out, pull on the right hand upward. Inhale, come to center, keep your knees together. Pull the left hand up as you brace out, knees unchanged, hips unchanged. And once more to each side, just pulling up into a deep twist. Inhaling center and then up on the other side. Inhaling, come to the center. Release your arms back to your chair pose variation. Push down into the feet as you might extend the body or even bend backwards with the arbus, releasing your arms back down. Now, this next squat is a bit different to Malasana, which we usually practice that wide-legged squatting position. So I have taken two blocks. However, you could also sit on a chair. There's no support needed if your knees and hips are great. So I will try and do it this way. I will place two blocks stacked. But if I do choose to sit down on this, I will keep the hold here. So I've got both blocks in my hands. This construction isn't quite as solid as I would like it to be. So if you've got a chair there, that might work. The feet and the knees come together. And you could just squat down without any support at all. But for me, my heels are off the ground and I'm unstable. So I will choose to sit on these two blocks, place the feet together in front. If you don't have a couch nearby, which you could sit on, this is nice and low, or a chair, but you do need to sit, please sit on the floor with your feet out in front. This is about a twist and not the squat at all. So knees are cl clued together, so are your feet. We will start to twist and turn, but bring the hands together first. Let's turn towards the right, hook the elbow to the outside of the knee and press the knee and the elbow against each other, as well as the palms of your hands. Now your knees are glued together, but they are also pressing against the elbow there. Your choice is here to hold or to even open your arms up, one reaching down, one might reach up, or you could reach the upper arm behind your back for a bind. But when you look down at your knees, they're still next to each other. You've got quite an intense twist in your upper back. No matter your choice, soften yourself out of the twist. Coming back into center. We will change sides, so hands touch again, turning to the left, and maybe your elbow hooks to the outside of the knee. You might press the knee into the elbow, the elbow into the knee, the palms of the hands together, the opposite elbow rising. You might look over towards that side. And extra option to extend both arms. Keeping your knees parallel is essential, so you might look down and check that they're still squeezing together. And if you don't want your upper arm extended, you might wrap that behind your back. Deep, solid twist. As we dissolve the twist, lifting your spine back into center. Now we're all in different positions, I suppose. If you're sitting high up, just like I do, be careful here as you release your construction, removing the blocks from underneath you, but keeping them close by your mat. We will come down to a seated position and we will practice a very simple seated forward bend. For this, I will fold up my blanket to sit upon. If you have a bolster, the bolster might come in useful already, as you could place it, for example, underneath your knees to make the forward bend quite restorative. That is one option. Second option also, if you have a bolster, 
you might place it over your extended legs and let your upper body relax over it. Do you need a bolster for this pose? No. <laughs> so if you don't, come with me. Bend your knees, flex your feet. Rest the hands down and take a deep breath. Inhaling again. With the outbreath, you can sway your belly towards your thighs. You can walk the hands there or just simply bend your hips. With your back still long, leave your shoulders easy, hands resting, feet actively flexed. And you might lower your head so you can look down between your knees. You might choose to stay here. Some of you will aim to deepen the forward bend. But it might be nice to just acknowledge the moment when we sit upright and prepared for this posture. What was in the forefront of your mind then? Was there any holding pattern developing or popping to the surface? Doubtful thoughts? I can't bend forward, I'm not flexible. Overly confident thoughts, that's easy. I really want to go with my nose to the floor. Both extremes are unbalanced. You might just simply choose instead of holding on to any outcome, or fear to explore, to just simply do and be present in this moment right now. With the next inhalation, lengthening the spine forward. With the out breaths, walking the hands back up into a seated position. Relax your legs, move the legs lightly. And then find an easy position in which your spine can be tall. So for me, this is easy. But this is not easy for everybody. So just because something is called an easy pose doesn't mean it is. You can even choose to lean against the wall if you find upright sitting is strenuous. I would love for you to join the hands in front of the chest for a little moment. Whatever you're holding preciously between the two hands. Opening the hands out in front of you, leaving the side of the little fingers touching and creating like a bowl in your hands. You can keep your elbows snug and your shoulders easy as we hold this for a while. So you might have your elbows resting by your side, the shoulders soft. And either you choose to have your eyes closed or you might steady your gaze into the palms of these hands. This is Push Panjali Mudra, the gesture of offering flowers. With this gesture, we think about holding some beautiful flower gently in our hands letting the flowers rest lightly without holding on too tightly we see these flowers as our material possessions our relationships and also our past experiences with material possessions the tighter we hold on the more we are weighted down, the more we become attached to something, the more we worry about losing it.
if we hold on too tightly to our relationships, they may wilt or slip away. When holding too tightly to the past, we don't realize the possibilities that are in the present. So we visualize the beautiful, delicate flowers and compare them to our possessions, our relationships, and our personal history through which we learn that they are to be treated with gentleness and kindness. And sometimes it's necessary to let them go. Aparikraha means non-grasping and refers to absence of attachment and greed. Aparigraha teaches us to take only what we need, keep only what serves us in the moment, and to let go when the time is right. So maybe you've got something to offer here as you lightly bow and extend your arms forward. Joining me again in a seated position. So you might have your eyes open for the transition. We might skip Shavasana today, only because the lying position is so very comfortable. So I will place a blanket here. If you don't have any bolsters or blocks in your home and you've chosen to use a chair or a couch, please position yourself next to it by sitting on the side. I'm demonstrating here hardly visible and then bringing your legs up the couch while lying down onto your back. The couch can be replaced by a chair. But if you have the bolster and the blocks, you might take your blocks in the highest setting, place them on the mat as we're building a stone hinge, and then placing the bolster on top of the two blocks. This is reasonable, you stable. To come onto this is very much the same as with your legs up a chair, the wall, or the couch. As you sit with the side of the hip towards it, Roll down onto your back and then bring, oops, <laughs> as needed to be demonstrated, bringing the legs up onto the bolster. Shuffle around so you feel comfortable and find the position so that your stone hinge is supporting your legs and you can completely trust if it has crashed like mine once, it will likely work in the second round. Maybe the blocks need to be as wide as the legs to rest your bolster upon. Anywhere that you have just placed your legs, as long as they are higher than the body and you are still in a relaxed position, you've done it correctly with your legs resting you might now also choose to close your eyes notice what you have just given away what you have just let go of in your generous gesture of open hands It was clearly something that you didn't want in your life anymore. And yet there could be one or the other thought of regret, of letting that go, which might still a sign of you holding on to it. And that's okay. 
as long as we are aware of it, we can create this change. I'd like to come back to the color that I showed you at the beginning of our practice, Zion. The message that comes here from the secret language of color cards is build your confidence. So I think it has a lot to tell us in relation to Aparigraha as well. You might choose to start seeing the color cyan in front of you. It assists with strengthening your confidence and belief in yourself. It balances the systems of your body and gives you clarity in times when you need to make choices. Cyan helps with stress release and the attainment of peace and relaxation. It is also very helpful in fine-tuning your communication abilities. Build your confidence with the help of a cyan circle. I will guide you into a little meditation now for which you need the color cyan again. Allowing gentle and slow breaths to flow. As you breathe out, allow yourself to completely let go. Release all stress and tension from your body. Our practice has prepared you for this. Taking another slow breath in. Visualize a deep cyan color filling your whole body. Your whole body is filled with the color cyan. Then you breathe out, relax. Imagine that there is a big cyan circle in front of you now. Focus on the different qualities which make a person feel confident. There might be things like knowing what you're doing, feeling good about yourself, feeling happy, getting what you want, and so on. Imagine placing all these qualities into the science circle. And once you've put them all in, step into the circle yourself. Focus on breathing all of those qualities in. Allowing yourself to become more confident and more empowered. When you feel completely confident, when that might occur, clap your hands three times and say, I now embrace my confidence, happiness and clarity. I now embrace my confidence, happiness and clarity. Once you have completed that for yourself, walk out of the circle as your body rests again, becomes easy. From now on, every time you need an extra boost of confidence, clap your hands together three times and breathe in the confidence. Uh, 
as you rest there, strong, confident human being, at ease, maybe even relaxed. Start deepening your breaths gently at first, then maybe a little more. Begin some movements back in the body and you might start small with fingers and toes and potentially extend into stretching. When you're ready, please join me in a seated position and maybe touching the palms of the hands together. Maybe this color is still with you. Maybe you even carry it into your day or have something to wear in this color to reinforce the confidence as well as the non-grasping. Whatever we have to offer to the world, with a light bow, extending that to each other. Namaste.